been so far from the ground, but I'm not looking down. Feel the warmth of the breeze rushing over me. Touch the sky, feel alive. We can fly, we can fly. Touch the sky, feel alive. We can Happy Friday, everyone! Yay! Oop, wrong set. No one saw that. Oh my god, Hillary's gonna be so mad. <laughs> Just on my friend Hillary's set. She's gonna think I'm cheating on her again. Oh, Hillary. She's so great. Isn't she the best? So How are you, good David? Good to see you. I'm good. Hello. What a crazy week. We have so much fun stuff to talk about. I, I feel like before we get into our topic of the day, I want to give a quick like overview that things are happening in our industry, okay? Yes. In the last two weeks, I've had briefings, either analyst events where all 40 of, you know, the regular people are uh, are in a meeting together with the company briefing them, or just private briefings, or even super secret private briefings with Zoom, what? RingCentral, Logitech, Poly, and Pexit. All in the last what? two weeks, and I think there's a couple I forgot, and they all had a lot of things coming. They're all things they're excited about. They're not resting on their laurels. They're not like, yeah, we had 300. They all had like a million percent growth last year. Oh, we had 400% growth, 300% growth. We're just chilling. No, they're like hungry. We're working on stuff. We're working on features. We're reaching out. I'm like, wow. So expect a lot Ooh. of things from our industry. Can you share anything with us? Mm, actually, you know, I should, I should write an article, like just a couple quick tips from each one. Um, Ooh, but I'd have cool. to go through my notes because half of it was NDA. I'm afraid if I say anything, I'll say the wrong thing. So I'm not going to yeah. say anything now. But it's it's fair to say growth, huge growth. And what I like is new features and new features based on what we learned over the last year. You know, the new features in video used to be we didn't know what people want. Make more resolution, better frame rate, make it better. Now we're realizing people want better ways to join meetings, better way to keep notes during meetings, better ways to interact during meetings, better ways to frame themselves. In, in your, you know, your, your, your Zoom, Pexip, blue jeans, whatever boxes when you're on screen. Um, things that we've learned from last year, now that we're actually using video uh, to make it, make it much better. But let's move on to our topic of the day. This is, we're going to have so much fun today. We have a guest. I, I can't wait to bring him on. But first, I want to kind of lay the groundwork for, for why I'm excited about this. I'm going to tell a little story. You can tell I'm going to talk at a mood today. So let's, let's, let's go with this. Do it. I'm um, all for it. So you're not a video gamer, right? You. Um, I mean, like I like Super Mario Brothers. Okay, that counts. That counts. I, had I think a for the most Genesis part. Genesis at one point. All right, so you know the you know the basics. But you have so many stories of working. I feel like you spent more time working than when I was playing. <laughs> so I have hours and hours and hours of being a video game addict. I'm I'm recovering today, um, but I used to play this game. This is way back. This is before you've heard of World of Warcraft. This is before World of Warcraft came out, but it was that kind of a game. And it was a persistent world. And that's what I loved about it. You know, Super Mario Brothers, you play it, and then when you turn off the cartridge and you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning to play again, you put the cartridge in, the game just starts over. You know, when you play Pac-Man, you press start, it's a, the map starts over. Right. This game was called Dark Age of Camelot. 
and it was a medieval <laughs> world and there were medieval castles and towns. And the thing is, when you turned it off, it kept on going. So I, you turn it on and you walk into town and your friends are your other, it's, you know, it was online, your other friends, their characters, they're in game and they're talking to you. And they're saying, oh, you should have been here an hour ago. It was amazing. We had a big fight with this big monster. You miss stuff when you're offline. And yeah, what one thing that I, of all the things we did in this game, the one thing I remember is when we built a house together. They put something in the game where you can build a house. Like in Sim City? Exactly. A little Sim house, but 3D. You know, it was, it was a 3D game. And we decided rather than all build our own houses, all of my friends chipped in. We got a really big house. And we worked on it together. That was our project. And since it was a persistent world, work kept happening when we were offline. I would go to sleep. I would wake up, I'd log in, and I'd see someone redesign the living room. We had a fireplace, and we have a chest with all of our equipment, and we have a new thing set up. Someone built a, a patio, and I would work on, work on it so with people. so nerdy. I love it. So, <laughs> so nerdy. But this feeling of building it together, and, and it's still existing when you're offline. They're still working on it. And when you come in, you don't have to say, okay, email me everything that was done so I can catch up. That's the way we work in the real world. Right. Right? Say, email me what you've been working on. I email you what, you, what I've been working on. How long does it take to build a house that way as opposed to actually right. building the house together? And I've always loved that experience and always thought there's nothing like that in business. In business, I do mine. I email you. you I wish there was a place where we could just walk in together and see what's going on. And if any of the members of the team are there, they're working. And that is what we're going to look at today, uh, a company called Bluescape uh, and our guest, uh, David Kong. And before, before we invite David, let's look at a, a little teaser video um, explaining it probably better than, than I can explain it. Collaboration is key to success in the modern workplace. To get there, you need a solution that brings everyone together with the same information from wherever they are in the world. Bluescape delivers collaboration you can see. Nothing gets teams on the same page faster than seeing everything at once. Our virtual workspaces help your teams see the big picture the little details, and everything in between, all at the same time. Transform the way you work together. All of your content, applications, and team communications are accessible in a persistent and secure workspace. You can whiteboard and interact with everything and everyone in real time. Have freedom to work from anywhere. Present and review from laptops, tablets, mobile phones, and giant interactive touch displays. Collaborate more effectively at work, from home, or just about anywhere you need to be. Document every note, action item, and decision. Workspaces preserve all of the annotations and markups from your meetings. You can also assign actions so your team can be productive immediately after the meeting is over. Better faster, and smarter decision-making. Bluescape makes collaboration across teams easy. From internal meetings to external presentations, getting on the same page has never been more seamless. So whether you're in the office, on the go, or working from home, Bluescape keeps you connected with the people, the content, and the information you need, wherever you need it. Make collaboration more engaging, decision-making more efficient, and work more productive with Bluescape. Together, from anywhere. Oh, went to the wrong set again. Oh my God, Hillary's going to kill me. David. <laughs> Welcome, David. Hi, thank are. you for having me. David and David. There we go. <laughs> so what did you think? I, I've never to told you, David, that that analogy that I made in my mind between the old video game concept of the persistent online world and your company's persistent online workspace. Am, am I totally off there or does that click with you? Actually, it clicks entirely. Um, you know, actually, our, our CTO often draws this, the same analogy, you know, of, of Bluescape being like a persistent world uh, and the notion that you know, we can give collaborators this virtual, you know, this virtual persistent workspace, right, where they have access to all the materials, uh, you know, it's very apt, right, because in a game, as you said, 
you know, when you turn off the game, the game world continues on. So that's one aspect that, that you nailed. The other aspect that you nailed was the, it's a collaborative environment, right? You are interacting with others and, and you're, a, in, you know, in your story playing Dark Age of Camelot, you were collaborating on building a house. You know, our customers collaborate on building cars, on building feature films. Uh, and that notion that there are no limitations to, you know, how you can interact and you could interact as a team, you know, synchronously or individual productivity, you know, on your own time. So, uh, and I think the other aspect uh, where the games analogy is very apt is just how immersive games are, right? Like you're totally involved, you're in the zone, you are immersed in that experience. And I think that's something too that people experience within Bluescape is that we remove so much of the friction around collaboration or around accessing and finding the content that you need to be productive so you can just focus on the task at hand in the same way that in the game you know you just get locked into that zone and next thing you know it's you know three hours later uh, and your eyes are <laughs> dried out yeah um but i think yeah i think it's a very apt analogy uh, um, yeah and i'm looking for that kind of immersion because as a leader of a remote team i'm trying to build the equivalent of of a physical office in in the cloud and i have my 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 cloud version of, you know, the water cooler conversation, we're in chat all day, we're always chatting with each other and having fun and gossiping. We have the equivalent of our files or physical files in the office. I have my, you know, Google Drive and, and OneDrive, but we don't have the equivalent of that, of that immersive meeting room experience. Well, we get on video together, but the, yeah. the persistent room. Uh, when I used to work in a physical office, we had what we called a war room. It, yep. it was a room that was designed just for working on this one project. And if you walked into the war room, there were people working on that project and you could sit and work on it. And I, I, I've i done a great job, I think, of virtualizing the office, but I don't have a virtual war room. And I think that's kind of what, what you're giving me here. That's exactly it. I mean, I love to say that Bluescape gives you all the advantages of a war room with none of the downsides, right? Because if you think about it, you know, Everyone wanted their own war room, but you only had so many rooms, right? So only those, you know, tiger teams, right? Or emergency situations or, you know, for important clients or customers, would they get the, the privilege of having their own persistent space to basically stage all their materials and to collaborate in? So Bluescape is basically an infinite number of war rooms, but it goes beyond that, right? Because um, you know, we have customers that have like these war rooms, but they always have to break them down and take, put them back up because of room scarcity. Um, or, you know, they just run out of space, you know, to stage all their information. So by transcending all those physical limitations of war rooms, we make them much more functional. But the most important thing uh, is this, which is the greatest downside of the war room is if you're not in it, you don't benefit from it. You know, so mm -hmm. here's a crazy story and I think your audience will appreciate it. So we had a customer who had like a, a project room they would use for large, um, you know, uh, retail events, you know, back to school holiday. And they would stage up all the materials so they can see all the different product lines and their partners. Um, and for their meetings, they would use a combination of video conferencing and Nest cameras. Like they would have, I think of like six Nest video cameras in the meeting. And the reason for it was because that was the only way someone who couldn't attend in person could get a view into the content that everyone else was seeing in the room. Mm. So what Bluescape does is it just virtualizes the whole thing. You don't have to be in the room, but you get the same benefit of seeing the content, you know, at pixel perfect detail. Uh, you can equally collaborate, you know, in terms of interacting with annotating, you know, clustering the, the, the content as possible. And so I think, yeah, once again, the, I think the war room uh, analogy is you know, very apt as well. And you know, like I say, we, we give you all the benefits with none of the downsides. And, you know, I think everyone could benefit from that, especially as we return to the office. And I think the key thing that I think folks are looking forward to is we now create not just a virtual war room, but a hybrid war room. Uh, that can really connect in office and remote participants in a way that uh, they couldn't have done before. Now that That's huge for me because um, I, I've seen this concept before, but it's always said you talked about not having to be in the room. It was always kind of having to be in the room. Actually, when I first met you, I think it was probably at a demo at, at Infocom or something for a, a, a company that had a physical kind of iteration of this. And I loved it. It was a big, beautiful board and these cool little controllers that, that you could do the stuff. But and it was a persistent workspace. Oh my God, a persistent workspace. This is great. I walk into the room and I could see what was done. And I can continue it building my, my Camelot house. 
but it was this physical thing and it was only in the room. And I said, hey, I, I manage a remote team. Oh, we're working on ways to get remote in with desktop. That'll be coming in the future. And and I'm like, let me know when it happens. And, and then they started to do that, but it seemed like it was still the device is what it's all about. And you can connect to the desktop and do some of the stuff. Uh, with Bluescape, it, it seems like, you know, it's it's not... The, the the remote team isn't an add on. The remote team is where it starts, and for me, that's what it's especially post pandemic. The new normal is that is that right? Can we see it? Oh, should we pop into the demo? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, right. I want to see it. <laughs> Show us how it all works. All right. I, I, oh, I should have come up with a big dun dun dun, dun reveal, but okay. So I, I have us down in the corner. And for for everyone watching, there is a video component to this. We're not using it now. I'm using my video tricks to put us down in the corner here so we can show it. But um, so D David, help me out. You invited me to a space. I clicked the yeah. link. I put in my name and I clicked OK. And now I'm here. I'm okay. in Bluescape. Yeah, so, so that workspace you see that it says Killian David, just click on it and it'll enter you into the workspace. Perfect. All right. Cool. So now you are opening up your persistent world. So welcome to uh, Camelot. <laughs> hey, okay. I'm going to close okay. the tutorials for now. Yep. All right. So what you see here is what we call a, uh, a Bluescape workspace. If you look on the top right, you can see little icons that show that uh, we are all now in this workspace together at the same time. So what you see here, uh, and I can walk you through a couple of different features is, sure. you know, I'll, this is like, we have the ability to not only, you know, annotate directly, you know, on the workspace, but you could also embed what we call sketch pads, but basically you can embed a whiteboard as well into the workspace so that you, that way you can kind of structure, um, you know, kind of structure your activities and structure your workspace like you would within a room, uh, which is pretty important. And actually one thing that you could do here is if you actually click on, uh, you know, where you see our initials on the top right, mm -hmm. you can actually see a list of us. And what I'll do is I'm gonna leave the workspace, right? So now, if you're following me, I can actually guide you through all of the content that's in the workspace itself. Oh. So what you see here is right now we're, we're in a canvas uh, and think of a canvas as, you know, like a, one analogy, think of it as like a folder, a visual folder for your content. Or another way to think about it is if we were all in a room, like this might be like a big piece of gator board, right? right. Where you might pin up content. And so I've provided a couple of different things here. You know, I have like a, a document, here's a PDF, which is a solution brief. We have some images. Uh, I've embedded a PowerPoint presentation, you know, as well as, you know, the video that we just shared. And I think an important thing for people to, to realize is that, you know, with Bluescape, it really does give you this whole complete workspace that lets you better collaborate. Because I think what we, even we saw this pre-pandemic where that, you know, you had the whole remote first movement, right? Which is a whole notion that if anyone joined remotely, everyone should just use the same tool set. And what happened was we all settled for the lowest common denominator of visual yeah. collaboration, which was video conferencing plus screen sharing. And I think as we've all learned through the past year, it's not really a true collaboration platform, right? What you wanna be able to do is you wanna build a, you know, look at your documents and share and, you know, share, um, you know, share content and review content as a team. So, you know, here I have a PDF document here that, um, you know, I've added, we can all talk through it. You know, I could add comments, uh, you know, to the document itself. Uh, I could also go in and, you know, let's say like, you know, we're reviewing and there's an issue, I can just say, hey, you know, let's focus on, you know, this block of copy, say, and this is super come cool. back later, you know? And then I can, now, here's one thing that's really, really critical. You'll see in a lot of online whiteboards that they'll say, oh, you can annotate content. And what will happen is, as I, let me just exit out of this, is once they, you know, move the doc, you know, once they move the document, the annotations are still floating above, you know, all of the content itself. Um, right, it's not tied to notice, it. Exactly. Like Step if you'll it. notice, it's actually stuck to it. Other things that we can do with Bluescape that are really exciting Wait, is- Real quick, I just want to make sure our, our readers, our viewers understand, and I've been writing too long, our viewers understand something. Uh, when we first started, we were in free flow mode where we can all just move stuff and control stuff. And I thought that's what it was. I thought it was, you know, 
don't want to use the word chaos, but but total freedom of, of everyone just doing their own thing. And when I click that follow, I stop doing stuff. I'm not moving things around. David is leading us. And, and I didn't realize that was a feature, but that's so cool because as a, as a sometimes team leader or team, even as a team member, it's nice to be able to have everyone in one view. And hey, I want to make sure everyone's looking at this. We're all on the same page now as opposed to just everyone doing their own thing. So sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to make sure everyone understood that David is is controlling now and Kelly and I are are, are just kind of, you know, being passive members. Hanging out. And, and you could actually have, you know, like in much larger meetings, you could have multiple leaders. So you can actually do kind of like breakout rooms. Um, but one thing that I think is really important, as much as you know, you hear us talk about things like it's an infinite canvas and it's a collaborative whiteboard. Um, the thing so many of our customers appreciated about Bluescape in the last year was really, it gave them a much better tool to meet and collaborate than just screen sharing alone, right? right. So, um, but what we do is we provide, you know, all the basics. So for example, like I could go in, I've uploaded, like so many people just use, of, you know, get on a Zoom call and they share a PowerPoint, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we can do the same thing. I can just click on that PowerPoint, click present. And now wow. we're just doing a standard, hey, you know, we're walking through, you know, a deck, but we're not limited to just that. I can go in and we can look at, you know, look at a video or I can go through here, for example, and let's say, you know, I'm gonna select these documents, these images and boom, I can present and we can do a slideshow around this it. This is so cool. Yeah. And then what's great is I'm going to stop leading, right? Now we can move between sort of a traditional, I'm going to share information with all of you. Uh, but anytime you can choose to unfollow. So y'all can jump in and annotate the content as well. It sticks to the content, so it's persistent. Um, and now we can really move fluidly between okay, I'm going to lead and you're going to follow to, okay, now let's actively collaborate. Yep. So yeah, there you go. I just did that. <laughs> yeah. And very soon we're going to add some more capabilities so you can actually see, you know, each other's cursors. And uh, just once again, it gives people that sense of virtual presence, you know? So, you know, I'll try. I love there. this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's just, it's so, yeah. Cause I mean, I mean, I work remotely, so I meet with people constantly and it's like, yes, I want to share a PowerPoint, but then it's like, <clears throat> I also want to share an image, right? And then yep. you have to stop presenting that image and the, or PowerPoint, then you have to represent. And it's like, I could just share my desktop, but it's such a mess that I don't want mm -hmm. people to see it. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's very kludgy. And this is awesome because you can, you can prepare ahead of time, all of the assets that you need to share. This is really cool. And even yeah. even worse than that, it's it's you know share is sharing is we share when we want to show something, but when we, we want to work on something together, I don't just share it with you when I'm in in a video meeting with you. I have to email it to you. I have to mm -hmm. email it to you. Wait for you to open it. Are you looking at it? If you have right. any changes, email them back to me. So so just the sharing alone is is something. But the, uh, being actually able, I mean, I'm assuming once I figure out the UI and learn how to do it, I don't want to I don't want to start clicking things and breaking them. Mm -hmm. I could just open things and start editing them. And actually, and to, to do that, we so we have integrations with uh, Google Drive, uh, Microsoft OneDrive. So you can bring in a Google Doc, and you can all collaboratively edit. You could bring oh, in, cool. you know, any document from from OneDrive. And you know, security for us is really important. So you know, with OneDrive, we have full identity federation. So for example, if I bring in a document and only Kelly and I have privileges, and David, you don't, only Kelly and I are going to be able to open it up. And so nice. that. It's, it's interesting because a lot of folks come to us, you know, through the lens of saying, okay, I'm looking for an online whiteboard and there's, and they kind of look at the market and they say, well, you all have infinite workspaces. You can all draw and you can all upload content. What makes Bluescape different? And I think the key thing for us is really content, right? And our point of view towards content. So this notion of being able to really annotate content, to view content with pixel perfect accuracy. Um, you know, we support things like, you know, watermarking so you can protect those visual assets. Um, you know, we're, I think we're the only ones that allow you to upload videos and synchronize playback. So we're all looking at the exact same frame at the same time. As okay, opposed, that's super cool. Yeah, you know, so for example, like if uh, I can open up this one here, I should jump my pen, all right? Yeah. 
Oh, shit, I'm going to leave the workspace again. Yeah, there it goes. Right. So it won't play effectively as in, you know, on Zoom, but this ability to actually step through video content, like especially for our customers in media and entertainment or anyone in a creative discipline, it's so important, right? Because we've all suffered with that notion of, okay, I'm going to play a video and then you either play it on your desktop and it gets, you know, it gets, you know, uh, compressed and the frame rate sucks, it gets out of sync, you know, or you have to stop the meeting and have everyone watch a YouTube video mm -hmm. and you, you know, especially if you're a creator, right? It, you totally lose confidence, right? Because people aren't viewing that content you spent so much time on the way it was intended to be viewed. And so we let you do that. And that's a big reason why, you know, a lot, you know, many of the studios here in Los Angeles use, you know, Bluescape for, you know, content reviews, you know, to make, you know, blockbuster, you know, films and animated products and uh, projects and, uh, and streaming shows. Very cool. This is amazing. You know, one thing I'm, I'm going to make an assumption and go again, going back to my um, dark age of Camelot days, we'd all be in there building the house together, but sometimes we'd have to discuss what's going on. What are you doing? Wait a minute. Why are you moving that? So there was always a chat. I'm guessing over here, this is where we would, and I'm, I'm blocking it. But so if I don't want to get on video, I don't want to phone call you, but I want to say, hey, wait a minute. What are you doing with them? What are you doing with my PowerPoint here? I could just type in, hey, what are you doing? Yep, yep. So you can add comments. Uh, you could also do at mentions as well. And so that's a really important thing that you mentioned because persistence is great, I think, for, for a couple of different reasons. One is, of course, let's say, let's say you do a sales call, right? So you spend this great meeting, brainstorming potential sales packages and options with your customer. Uh, but the fact then that the workspace is persistent means you could reference that content right away. Like it's easy for you and your customer to understand this is what we agreed to. But a really a huge benefit, especially for folks who are doing content reviews in Bluescape, is that all the information is right here, right? Like you can annotate directly on the document and say, we need to fix this. And you know what they mean, because we've had so many customers say, like they will get an email and the email will say, image 457.jpg needs to be updated. And what do you do with that email? Because you don't remember what image <laughs> <Right? laughs> 457.jpg is. So now you go, you, now you, you wait say, 10 minutes. This one. Exactly. You can just say this one. <laughs> and so that ability, ability to maintain context is such a huge time saver. And those time savings then lead to increased you know, productivity. Very cool. It is. It's so much nicer because I use Slack a lot. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, just going back and forth. And then it's like, somebody sends me a document on Slack and it's like, well, when the heck did they send that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and then it gets buried, right? Yeah, and then it's like, and it's the same with email. It's just impossible to find it. And if it's all living in one spot, that's that's something. My hand yeah. looks giant. Yeah, let me make you a little bit. I figured I'd take us to the pub. <laughs> let's, let's, oh, uh, let's, let's resize. Let's home away from home. I know, I know it's Friday. Kelly needs a beer. There we go. <laughs> It's weird. The, the books and the and the bottles actually match up pretty well. Yeah, they kind of do, don't they? That shelf yeah. back there. <laughs> I know. I should, I should camouflage. I should stick That's the bottles funny. back here. Yeah, none would be the wiser. <laughs> I thought that'd be fun. So, um, sorry, just fixing some stuff back. Scene. No worries. Uh, so, um, so thanks for the demo. Um, is sure. there is there anything else? Anything we forgot to ask as far as functionality? I think we got the basics, and it seems the kind of thing where to to really get all the value of it, you got to dig in and play with it a little bit to, um, you know, see all the features and stuff. But is there any any big features we missed? Uh, two. So the one is we have built-in video calls, right? So oh, uh, nice. you saw that little camera there on the upper right. If you click on it, anyone in the workspace would be thrown into an instant meeting. So we have so that way you can just do ad hoc video calls it's all built in it's native to the platform oh, cool but for folks who want to leverage their existing investments right in webex and zoom we have integrations with webex and zoom okay. where and the great thing is that you know once again just just to you know hate on screen sharing some more <laughs> as opposed to like just attaching someone's screen to a video call we embed your video call into the workspace right okay. kind of like what i do here Exactly, because the whole usually the whole point of these meetings is to talk about content, and at that point, you know, the conversation takes a back seat to the discussions around the content that we're all we're all actively collaborating around. So I think that's a, a key feature that um, 
uh, we didn't discuss, and one that's behind the scenes um, is our deployment options. So we can deploy public cloud, private cloud, as, as well as on-prem. So there's a lot of customers that are in highly regulated industries or in the federal government and intelligence agencies who want the benefits, right, of virtual collaboration, but they can't go on the public cloud. And so that's a, that's a pretty big one. Um, and then lastly, you know, we are, you know, we have a free trial available that folks can, uh, oh, you know, nice. sign up for so they could, you know, do a, uh, do a 14 day free trial and, you know, try Bluescape on for size. Um, and that's an option for folks as well. All right. I'm going to do something out of character. I'm going to ask a tough question. I, I ask, I ask softballs, you okay. know, I'm, I'm usually a fan and a Pollyanna. I like everything. I'm like, like Kelly, you're watching this demo going, I like that. I like that. That's, that's, that's me all day. <laughs> But I'm gonna, I want to ask a tough question. A lot of times I see technologies like this and I see amazing demos that blow my mind, usually at, at Infocom or Enterprise Connect. And then I find out that what happens is when they get sold to enterprise, the amazing demo stuff, it's for expert users who, who have been playing it with it for months and months. And the regular users, they wind up just not using it. They say it's too complicated. I can't figure it out. It looked great in the demo, but eh, it's really it's really a hassle when you get down to it. I'm just going to do things the old way. What's your actual usage? Once once you give this to a customer, do they come back and say, yeah, we have two or three people that really like it, or they say everyone's on it, or, you know, what's the real deal? Yep. So luckily we have amazing analytics into the into Bluescape. So we know exactly what people are doing um, and, and how they're engaging with the product. And so I think what we, and, you know, so I'll do share two analogy, two stories. So one story is, you know, you mentioned, okay, um, you know, really deploying this across the enterprise. So, you know, uh, Ford just published a fantastic white paper on their whole, you know, strategy around hybrid work. Um, and in it, right, they, they acknowledge that Bluescape usage increased, you know, 200%, you know, within mm -hmm. Ford, right? And that's a, that's a full enterprise wide deployment where, you know, you see folks everywhere, we're using it everywhere from you know product uh, product development and strategy rooms you know down to you know you know finance right they're using they're using bluescape now i will acknowledge that a lot of it is highly dependent upon the meeting scenario so you know sometimes yes we breathe our own oxygen and we imagine the scenario everyone meets in a way that everyone's actively collaborating and the reality is that you know it is probably more hierarchical than that so what you see is people kind of kind of right fit their uses of Bluescape based upon the role. So, you know, in the like in, in media entertainment, you'll have folks like production coordinators and stuff who are very active in Bluescape. And the reason why is, you know, before Bluescape, they spent their all the time printing things up and mounting mm. them on boards and transcribing notes. And now they're doing it digitally, right? And then you have you know, say the director who is much more of an end user, right? They're more kind of sitting back and using it to kind of browse or reference content. Uh, and I think that's the key thing, which is, you know, and, and it's a challenge and it is a tough question because it's about helping people, you know, find the right utility of the product based upon the kind of meeting. Uh, and it is an education process, uh, but we have an amazing customer success team. We have what we, we have Bluescape University that creates amazing onboarding videos, uh, a full knowledge base. Um, and so, you know, we have, of course, there's always room for improvement, but we do as much as we can to make our users aware of the content they can use to get up to speed. Uh, we have our customer success team to work closely with them to drive adoption. Uh, we have amazing new customer adoption campaigns that are in the works to continue to develop this. So you're absolutely right. Anytime you introduce new technology, it is, it is a challenge. Um, and I think the biggest challenge from us, especially from a marketing perspective, is to, uh, like we had a meeting yesterday where, we're, where the, uh, the mantra I use was, we need to shrink the universe of Bluescape to um, optimize for individual success. Right, which is, you know, and it's hard, right? Because as a marketer, you want to talk about 20 different features and benefits. Mm -hmm. But the reality is for an individual, they just want an easy way to share content and meet with their team. Right. And so that's what we're we're focusing things on. And I think if we're successful in that, then they will start exploring more and, and start seeing a lot of the other amazing benefits of, of the application. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I would think one of your one of your biggest struggles would be um, 
telling your engineers not to be adding more features because I could think of a million cool ideas and I'm sure they're coming up with them every day. And, and designers, you know, coders like to just because I can do it, I want to do it. But it's it's really you got to keep it lean. So it's just the things people want, because if there's too many buttons and too many things, I'm going to just think yeah, it's not for it's me. Too hard. Yeah. Or, it's for someone smarter another, than me. Yeah. Well, there's also the, there's this this partially is a way it's a unique problem of this category, which is not so much about ha throwing too much at the user, but not having enough. So, you know, we're fixing this, but like, you know, a lot of times when you just jump into a, a canvas, it's just blank, right? Uh, where do so, I start? Yeah. So we all know what yeah. to do when we have a blank document or a blank spreadsheet, but when you have this blank workspace, you're sort of like, ah, uh, so we realize, okay, we need to give people a softer place to land to get mm -hmm. them started. So that tutorial that you click through is like a start. We're going to do more there, but absolutely you're putting, you're bringing people into a new context. Um, and, and then the other challenges, of course, were, we're enabling new ways of working. Right. And so that whole notion of training people or untraining people from traditional video meetings of, okay, if you want to share something, you're going to have to interrupt the meeting. <laughs> you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, getting people to understand you don't have to worry about, you know, switching the ball or like that you could explore content on your own. But I think, you know, I think people adapt to it pretty quickly because it starts meeting those needs. Like, you know, I like to say to folks um, that in a way, Bluescape isn't a new way of working. It's the way we work when we're just sitting together in the same room. Yeah, I, I was going right? to say, it's, you know, there'll be some, uh, you know, need to adapt a little bit, but it should be an easy transition because I'm not, it's not really a new way to work. It's just a more natural way to work. You know, when I feel like exactly. saying something, I say it. When I feel like moving something, I move it. When I feel like typing something, I type it. As opposed to the other lockdown where it's like, someone else is sharing. Someone else is sharing. I can't do anything now. Or I'm right. sharing. I'm doing everything. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's real teamwork. It is it a subscription model or how do, how do organizations like if it like for me, I'm just one person, right? So mm -hmm. if I were to like, is it scalable where an individual can have a subscription as well as a very large enterprise team or how does that work? That's a, good no, that's a great question. Kelly. Um, question. Yeah, I just so want to make sure that I'm like, I can afford it. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we have, you know, what we call like Bluescape teams, which is for small teams. So it's like $10 per user per month uh, up to Bluescape business, which is 20 bucks. And then we have Bluescape, you know, enterprise, which is, you know, call us. Uh, but the reason for that is at that point, we're talking, you know, additional customizations. You might want to go on prem. You might want specific integrations. Um, but yes, it's a subscription model. So uh, it's, you know, pay uh, per user per month. Uh, we don't yet have it as easy for customers to join with just, you know, adding a credit card, but e-commerce is definitely uh, coming to the site. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's per user per month. Of course, once you get to the enterprise level and scale, we tend to more look at, you know, can we just structure like an enterprise license? Because at that point, you know, having, you know, having folks go through all the rigmarole of tracing color of money and doing audits and, um, you know, it gets kind of ridiculous. So we're, we definitely get more flexible at the enterprise scale. Okay. But for a small team of five, I get five user licenses for my team and we're good to yeah. go. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. All right. And my dog is whining outside the door. And so I'm going to let her in. So give me one second. I apologize. Oh, no, that's all <laughs> no good. <worries. laughs> um, yeah. So I'm trying to think I have any, any more questions. Um, uh, let's find your green screen artifacts. Hi Kelly. Oh, that was quick. That was quick. Yeah. Sorry. She's makes this weird, like chirping sound. That sounds the only thing I can compare it to is a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just don't want to. What's her name again? Nola. Nola. She's Love a little that. French bulldog, but she, um, yeah, she's sitting there whining outside the door, and I don't want to. Oh, they got to be careful. They're getting they're, there's all those rashes of French bulldog nappings. <gasps> yeah, I know, but like she's we're so she, off topic. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> that's okay. We're in the bar. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> I have no. I am. Um, she's such a little diva, though. She's a she's a snot. Like nobody would want to take her. <laughs> 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 yes i know the whole lady gaga thing crazy right yeah, yeah that's, that's a few, few blocks away from me yeah seriously yeah your neighbors with lady Is gaga three blocks from no, lady gaga no 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 <laughs> her, 
her dog sitter, I oh. think, is a few blocks away from me. Yeah. No. Actually, that, that's about as close a celebrity as I've gotten. We should have we should have Lady Gaga's dog sitter on as a guest. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Forget about Lady Gaga. We'll Funny. just get a dog sitter. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he's healing all right. Yeah. All right. Well, it, it is Friday. I know everyone's itching to call it an early day. Is there anything else about Blue Skip? I think this was an awesome episode. This was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, this was great. This is super cool. I love this. Yeah, well, I definitely just, you know, encourage your audience to, you know, check us out, uh, bluescape.com, you know, follow us on uh, uh, LinkedIn and, uh, you know, Twitter, the standard things. Uh, and if you like this video, subscribe down below. Yes, uh, like, like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe. Uh, but thank you so much for, you know, for having us. Uh, and it's fun. great to be able to share with you what's, what uh, Blue Scape's capable of. And, uh, yeah, look forward to, you know, joining again. All right. and, and this was I hope this YouTube uh, did a good job of recording this one because I want to share this out. This was this was good. All right, Kelly, you ready it. for our final thoughts? Do you have one this for this week? I do. You do. All right, let's do this. I do. I hope I set it up right. Zooming in from outer space to the wisest oh spot on the planet, Mount Wisdom. There she is. <laughs> yes. So my um, random crazy thought. Well, it's more of a fact. Um, that I just learned because I'm a huge spice nut. Like I love spicy food. And um, do you know humans are the only animals that enjoy spicy foods? Really? Yeah. Nobody else. Just us. Is that, That's all is I that got. A, oh, does that make us better or worse than the other animals? I don't know. Although to be fair, it's like, how would you even know that? Because it's not like you're asking them, right? Or maybe they feed it to them and they're like, ew. Yeah, it could be that too. All right. With that, we thank you all for watching. Please come back next week. We have guests lined up for weeks and weeks. We're starting to really gear up the the, the podcast here. Um, we're going to continue to keep it loose and have fun with it, but we're going to continue having amazing guests. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Thanks, David and David. All right. Have a great weekend. <laughs>